أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وشرب لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شكره وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, truly and verily all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him and seek only His help and His forgiveness. We also seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our nafs. And we talked about that, that the nafs is inclined to do so. It has already been decreed, it's already been written that the sons of Adam, that they will sin. But the best in the sight of Allah are those that make tawbah, repentance. So we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu from the evil of our nafs because it is inclined to do su, which is evil, except by the mercy of Allah. And we obtain that mercy by obedience to Allah, meaning the Quran, and obedience to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa meaning the Sunnah. We also seek refuge in Allah subhanahu from the evil of our sayyati amanina, those actions that are not sanctioned by Allah subhanahu in the Quran, and those actions that are not sanctioned by the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the sunnah Those from Allah subhanahu wa wills to be guided to Islam Because guidance is from Allah No one can guide you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said that if he wishes to guide you It is he, Allah That will open one's heart to Islam So guidance is from Allah And if Allah wishes to lead you off the surat al-mustaqim Meaning that he turns his rahmah away from you That you have no light That you have no guidance then no one can guide you. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one God who has no partners. And we bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is his slave and his messenger, Amma Abad. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that the best speech is the speech of Allah, meaning the Quran, and that the best guidance, the best example, the best format, blueprint that we follow is the example of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The worst of all matters are those things that are innovated by the people pertaining to this deen. For all innovation leads to bid'a, all bid'a leads to dalala, which is going off the surah the mustaqim. All dalala is in the nar, which is the fire. So we seek refuge in the lost of Allah from that fire. For surely, the only reason why we're here created is to worship Allah and to be saved from the fire. We make a dua. Dua is supplication to Allah. And the best du'as are the du'as of the Qur'an Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana Wa fil akhirati hasana Wa kina adhaba nar Ya Allah Our Lord give us good in this life Our Lord give us good in the next life And save us from the punishment of the fire Ya Allah Ameen The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Said that those who strive to obtain knowledge That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Will make their path to paradise easy those who strive to obtain knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa will make the tariqah jannah. He'll make it easy for them. So the sahabas, they asked them, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is knowledge? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that knowledge is knowledge of Allah wa rasuluhu, meaning knowledge of the Quran, and knowledge of the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the knowledge that will make your path to paradise easy. For as they say, Knowledge is power. The more knowledge that you have, the more powerful you'll be. So again, as they say, knowledge is power. The more knowledge that you have of this deen, the more powerful you will be in this deen. The more power you'll have to protect yourself against shaitan's tricks, the more knowledge that you have of having fear of Allah. As the scholars say that taqwa comes with knowledge of Allah. The more knowledge you have, the more understanding you have of Allah, the more understanding that you have of Allah, the more fear that you have of Allah because you understand and comprehend them a little bit better. The more knowledge that you have, Allah tells you about certain things that you didn't have knowledge of. He tells you about the hereafter. He tells you about Yom Kiyama. He tells you about the hellfire. He tells you about the Jannah. He tells you about the Jinn. He tells you about Shaitan. He tells you about the tricks of Shaitan. He tells you about the stories of the prophets. He tells you what they did or how they uh, handled certain situations when they were uh, faced with certain situations. This is knowledge. Right? 
So Allah Subhanahu says all throughout the Quran that verily in these stories is wisdom for those who reflect. The more you know about something, right, the more knowledge you have about something, the more you read about certain things, thus you will obtain the wisdom behind it, inshallah. The subject matter in which we're teaching today is Tawheed. We talked about Tawheed. Brief recap, just on what's on the board from last week. Because we talked about a lot last week, and today we'll be starting from page 9. Y'all remember last week? We're starting back at page 9, inshallah, from the book. But just a brief recap uh, before I erase what was on the board. So we just have a little reflection, inshallah. We were talking about chapter 2, verse 102. Chapter 2, verse 102, Allah Allah tells us that it was the shayateen. It was the devil advocates that taught people magic. The shayateen or the jinn. We talked about the Arabic word for magic itself. And we also learned from this ayat that Allah Allah said that the magic that they learned or the magic that was taught in the time of Babylon, because chapter 2, verse 102 talks about Babylon or Babel, that the magic that was taught by the jinn, or as it says, Harut and Marut, which was the two angels that were sent to test the people, was the magic of divorce. So we're told in this one specific ayah that there are people that specifically go out of their way. There are people that will specifically go to try to destroy other people's marriages. And Allah calls it magic. He said that they would do some type of magic. They would do some type of evil lie. They would do some type of incantation. Right? Whether it's with blowing on something, whether it's on taking on something, whether it's doing evil lie or whatever else that uh, mechanisms or whatnot that people may use. We learned about the Hadith. We learned that Shaitan, he loves divorce. Right? Where's Shaitan's throne at? Where's it at? The on the water. He said he competes with Allah's Quran in everything that he does. And he said that every day his soldiers, they come back and they report to Shaitan. And after every little jinn or whatnot, they come and report back to Shaitan. The one that tells Shaitan that he, not, that he did not leave until he caused the husband and wife to split. This is where Shaitan says what? You done well. You done well. So we understand that one of the major things that Shaitan sets out his soldiers to do is to cause divorce. So divorce is from Shaitan. Anyone who's in the middle of somebody's marriage trying to cause a divorce, they are from the Shaitan. Devil advocators. It is only of the Shaitan. It is only of the devils that would wish to cause a divorce between a husband and a wife. That is not from Allah. That is not from those who enjoying the right for being the wrong that is not from those who want for their brother or want for their sister what they want for themselves so one who tries to advocate divorce or try to cause a divorce they are from the shared team they are working for shaitan because shaitan loves divorce we learned that babylon is where iraq so the Babylon that we keep hearing about, you know, Babylon is falling, Babylon, 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 right? Where they learned all this magic, this was in Iraq, modern day Iraq. What is the hudud or what is the punishment for those who do magic? Death. Death. Alhamdulillah. Um, 